You think you know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was? Before I was me, I was you. you. Man score, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. You ready? Yeah, go for it. But that was your, your cue was your eyebrows? I was, it's fine. <laughs> that was... The head nod was really How are you? Action. Thick ass eyebrows. <laughs> and Yo, go. take them caterpillars off your forehead, son. <laughs> You know, I, just, yo, I lost up, some yo. weight, and now you got to shit on my eyebrows. It's never enough. <laughs> what are the beauty standards going to be equal? Listen, uh, 80 more pounds. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, fuck this. <laughs> By that time, Comedy Central won't even be like an internet channel. It's It'll already not. Stickers. <laughs> it's done. Yeah, it's finished. <laughs> Jesus. Yo, what up, Hal? You ready to rock and roll? Yeah, let's do this. Fuck it, we've been yeah. already doing it. Dre, you ready to rock and roll? Yes, sir. Let me talk to the fans real quick. I want to appreciate the fans for listening. We got a special guest. One of my dogs, my mans, my motherfuckers. <laughs> Give it up for my dog. Funniest dude in the in the world. Give it up for Joe DeRosa, y'all. Give it up for Joe DeRosa. Thank you. That's what up, sweet. Joe? Nothing, man. How you doing? You know I love you to death, Joe. I love you too, man. That was a nice intro you just gave me. Thank you. I, lo I love you to death. You know that, like I for know. real, for real. Like I not know. even, not even like what I tell most white dudes. Yo, I love you, and I don't really mean it, but well, I mean you, it. With, with most you. white dudes, when you say I love you to death, it's like until I kill you. I love you until <laughs> that I choke, moment that I kill I you. Choke this shit. I'm nah, claiming my Egyptianness. I'm done being white. I'm running <laughs> as fast well, as away from white, white as I can. Listen, uh, Joe. Joe is running away from cancel culture like this. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Joe, what was the thing exactly. Patrice said to you specifically about that? Do you remember the exact quote? Yeah, I remember it. I'm not saying it because I'll get canceled. Oh, <laughs> it had too enough. many slurs in it. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, do you remember what he said? I remember the, the guidelines of it. Uh, I can't say it technically either, but basically it was, I want you to stop pretending that you're not a blank African. Like, stop pretending that you're white and that you're not an N-African. A dirty, a dirty nigga African, African blank. African. Yeah. A dirty African, <laughs> African blank nigga. like the rest of us. Stop pretending <laughs> like you're white. I'm sick of it, Joe. And he was I should have taken like, his I'm advice. I would have been ahead of the curve with this fucking wow. hate white dude bullshit. You were busy riding the white wave when it was going down. The you played the right wave. time, Joe. Yeah, it was you it was bought, all right for a minute. You bought low, you sold high. That's how it works. <laughs> then he just he rode that that surfboard right when the tide was high, and then he just Egyptian his way right off. <laughs> do, 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 do. I mean. Dante knows as well as anybody. I I I never felt. I don't think I ever got a fair white shake. No, no. <laughs> fair white I'm shake. struggling way too hard for a white dude in comedy. To, I yeah. should have a lot more right now. You, you, should, you should. Well, the problem is you, you look like one of them villains from Taken. So <laughs> as he as he ages, he's gonna turn into a bodega owner. Yeah, he's gonna, uh, yeah, yeah. He's gonna start smoking real short look, look, cigarettes. Look, 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 look. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. You, you don't do, Let me tell you about the blacks. Let me tell you about the blacks. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna turn into a Giannis Papas character. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, I somebody can't. give me a cat. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait till that Mauricio comes back and bites him in the ass. <laughs> oh, shit. He is oh, finished. Boy. Giannis had four characters, a transsexual, oh, a gay guy. Uh, a Greek, a Greek. <laughs> Every character and the transsexual was also Puerto Rican. We're so the same person. It was a tra- down. A Puerto Rican transsexual, yeah. and and he had a uh, an armless Nazi. You ever see that? I've seen that one. <laughs> Christ. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, it was funny. It was an that armless one Nazi it to the pilot it was, season. It he was funny because series. every time he would go Zeke, how he would, he would go Zeke out. <laughs> <laughs> and then whatever whatever crazy shit he says with Chris DeStefano on that podcast. So, uh, a lot. Yeah. so Giannis's clock is counting down. Our good friend Giannis Papas. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Giannis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't help that he's got Chrissy cop face <laughs> <laughs> sitting right next to him. Chris looks like a cop. Jesus Christ! Let's make a uh, action movie with Chris and Mike Vecchione. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, that shit. would be it. <laughs> Yeah. So, talking about nigga Pat beat. It's called, it's called nigga beat. <laughs> <laughs> Started Chris DiSavato and Mike Vecchione. And then we could have, let me see. We have Keith could be the loud, obnoxious uh, police captain. Uh, uh, you, yeah. you pieces of shit. Get in my office right <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'm tired of it. Y'all are, I, you, you, oh come in, you shit, I'm tired of your shit. I got the mayor and the city council on my ass, goddammit. Oh. I want Dante in it. I want Dante in it as the dude that's just trying to do the right thing now. Yeah, I'm trying to do the right thing. sorted past. You're just trying to live a simple just life. Trying to now. live a good life. But if not, if it's like all other all of the other roles Dante plays, it's the smaller guy's gonna come in and kick him through a fucking storefront window. It's gotta but, happen. It's gotta have some Dante, little dude's gonna knock me out. Dante Whatever. has to go, hey, where you think you're going? And then a four foot five guy front kicks him. Beat the bricks off this nigga. <laughs> you know what you call it just did that. Uh I did uh um Ray Donovan, well, like, Ray Donovan yeah. and, and fucking Terry Terry knocks me out with one punch. Which one's what Terry? Terry? The little one. The little one the one with the Parkinson's disease. I never saw it. Who who's the actor? Lee Schleiber is the, the lead on Ray Donovan, right? And then uh the dude, what's his name? What's his name? Uh, I'll the look fucking... it up. The other what's his what's the character name? Terry? Terry. Uh, you guys uh, It's uh Ray Donovan's brother. With the shit he has the, Yeah. Eddie Marshall. I got to look at He's a boy. Only Terry I'm thinking of right now is Terry Crews. That nigga not doing too hot in the news. Oh, boy. No, because he's Selling afraid black of black people out. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we want. Black we gonna put, is the trouble. We going to put. We going to put him. Candace Owens. Uh, the Reverend who's tr- for supporting Trump. Uh, what about those two ladies Papa, who supported Trump. Uh, the Diamond and oh, Pearl. Yeah. And, and, and Pearl. Uh, Goya. And then we got. And and uh, uh, what's his name on there? Um, Diamond oh, and yeah. Pearl and, Can you and who else? The beans, uh, nigga? Terry Crews and who else? Let me see. And we gonna put them all on a school bus and run them off the cliff. Fucking, Fucking the beans shit. sold us out. Who knew the beans? You should have saw it coming since the Dominicans wasn't fucking with us. When the Dominicans wasn't fucking with us, I knew Goya was coming right now. You're wrong, Andre. You're wrong. Here's what you don't understand. As as a Latino, I'll tell you, there is no brand loyalty. Now, the Harry only Latino. loyalty, the only Shut loyalty up, is man. to whatever's on sale. A real Latino will take the <laughs> shitty dollar store beans and season that shit until it's delicious. So mm-hmm. it has nothing to do. We don't give a fuck about Goya or anything else in, in my household, uh. at least. God damn it. I thought, I, I, Harry, I thought you were Greek this whole fucking time. I'm half Armenian <laughs> and half Ecuadorian. so Same same thing. Yeah. yeah. So I got yeah, none exactly. of that. So you feel bad, Joe, but I got no in, no industry help. They didn't know what to do with me. They're like, we have <laughs> no, nowhere to place you. You should have jumped on that that uh, Kurt Metzger cancellation uh, when, he, <laughs> when he made fun of the genocide. <laughs> that was your one shot. I should have oh, sold yeah. Kurt out. You're right. I should have. <laughs> you missed it. Damn that was it. your one shot. And it's not going to happen again because no one cares about the Armenians. We're the poor man's Jews. No one cares. No, you know? like Kim, Kim Kardashian got some like some power for them. No, don't they, don't they get mean, some reps? Just one, baby. That's, just one of that's them. That's it. Just that family. That's the only family. Is there that's anybody it. else? It's anybody just, else you could think of? It's just that family. Andre Agassi, I think. That's it. That's the only people benefiting from it. 
system guess, of a down. There's not a lot. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, man. It's not man. a powerful lobby. <laughs> you missed and, it, dude. Yeah. You, had, you had your window. It's closed. Hence, yeah. hence why um, uh, Joe is only coming out as Egyptian today. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> he's, looking, he's looking for a new runway. <laughs> <laughs> well, he saw how well Rami did, and he's like, I got to get my own series. Uh, Jesus. I knew Rami, <laughs> I knew Rami since Pete Davidson age. I knew yeah. Rami when he was like 16. I, I should have hitched my wagon to him. I didn't know. I had no idea. He, he didn't want to do up. the Pyramids of Comedy tour like he you offered were, back. You, back too bu- you were too busy telling them they stink. You were too busy. Really busy telling them how much they stink. <laughs> I'm such, such an asshole. I deserve <laughs> every bit of nothing that I have right now. I, I but you show more respect. Have you but seen you, Rami's show? It's good as shit, though. I will say that. Yeah, I like Rami. Yeah. I like Rami. I'm just fucking around. But yeah, uh, Pete, I remember dumb Pete coming around and going, Joe, you want to do my show? I was like, no. <laughs> oh, stupid. You ended it with stupid was a period back then. We see you stupid as a no, stupid. <laughs> Joe, is there a highlight reel of you telling younger comedians to fuck off? A young Michael Che going, hey, Joe, could you help me out with my I got writing some, packet? I have, I have some no. beautiful, I have some beautiful fumbles. Really? Some beautiful fumbles. <laughs> Because oh, Colin Quinn's got some great ones. But. I can tell you about at least five times Tiffany Haddish, before she was famous, pulled oh. me aside and said, I want you to write with me. I was like, yeah, yeah. That's terrible. That's terrible. Oh, yeah, I got, some, I got some beautiful fumbles in this Pete business. Davidson, Rami, Tiffany Haddish. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I, damn, I dropped the ball. What are you going to do? Yeah. Colin yeah, Quinn who- turned down. Remember when Colin Quinn, he'll tell the story about it. He turned down. He didn't even have to audition. He turned down the role to play Dr. Evil's son in Austin oh, Powers. Because he was busy doing his own, writing his own thing. He didn't even have a movie. <laughs> Jesus Christ. God, God damn it. Yeah, God he's got that it. one. He's got the story about fucking up the Woody Allen movie. It's oh, like geez. Colin. Well, what happened, what's the story with the Woody Allen movie? He just said, you know, he was he like got booked in a Woody Allen movie. And then they were like, you got to be here at 9 a.m. And he showed up oh, at like shit. one because oh, he was like, shit. you're not going to use me at nine. <laughs> Everybody got <laughs> mad at him. I don't know. I don't I forget how it ends, but. It was just it, classic fucking It ended Colin. with Colin going, what the fuck, what the fuck, fuck, with his <laughs> fist in his mouth. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, Joe, how you doing, man? It's good to see you. Is it's that my, good. Is that my, oh, shit, I'm is sorry. My phone's going phone? off. No, 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 it's my, let me, let me stop that. I'm sorry, guys. Hold on. No, is, no, that no a, is that a rotary phone? Yeah. Jesus Christ. You got to take it off the hook. Yeah. Yo, what's up? Sorry. You, you had to take your phone off the hook? <laughs> <laughs> That's how broke I am. I got a fucking rotary cell phone. He's getting calls from Broadway Danny Rose. Oh, Jesus. They're getting calls from 98. Yeah. 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 I'm, f- I'm fine, man. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm all right. I mean, this, you know, just trying what? to make Go- sense of everything. It's, let me tell you something, Harry. Uh... Joe is having a rough time with the the uh, the reckonance that uh that's happening right now. <laughs> oh, to the comedians? <laughs> no, just the cancel culture. The 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 we were talking about this earlier. How you know the you know the cancel culture is run amok, mm-hmm. and uh and I'm like, yeah, well, it's it's got to run amok before it finds some kind of balance. But I I think it'll find some balance. You, I mean, I don't know, man. I thought it was that. I said, I said to somebody today, uh, if a fucking pandemic couldn't teach us all how fragile and fleeting life is, and that we need to fry the bigger fr- fish, and not worry about if fucking Chris D'Elia, uh hit on a nineteen-year-old girl at some point, like I, I'm like, I don't know what will. Like I don't know. I listen. I'm a, I'm all for justice. What I don't like is this public stoning that happens before anybody's got proof on anything. Nobody steps back, takes a breath, and goes, "Well, hold on, let me just what happened here. Let's talk about it for a minute." That's the part that freaks me out, man. There is no more. I, because, I don't know. It's weird. But it's, you know? it's because it's because it's not really about. It's really not about what they're saying. I I say this all the time: is people people want to be in conversations that they don't give a fuck about. That's what, the problem. What do you, they what wanna, do you mean by that? They they wanna they want validation 
in the context of their life when they don't deserve validation. See, before, like you said, before social media, you had a situation where people would do certain things at, like, be, be, if you was a bum and you was nobody, you shut your mouth. You 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 wrote your letter to John Wayne, and <laughs> it, it was in a big yeah, sack. Yeah. It was in a big burlap sack that nobody read it, and you you felt good that you sent the uh, that you sent the letter, even though you never got a response. And if you did get a response, what did you get? You got you got a a a, a letter. Mm -hmm. back a form letter a form letter back and you were happy that mm -hmm. somebody even sent you a form letter that's right what it took happened months yeah right i mean it's <clears throat> it's crazy to me i mean you know look you, you i'm not trying to say that you 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 should be able to find ethics in corporate america uh or in hollywood but it is crazy to me that there was a time where you could get picketed for whatever reason, uh, and still live. You could still live. You could, you know, you say, ah, people are picketing and this section of people over here is mad. But, you know, like the documentary about uh, Death Row Aftermath, uh, the, the, the Defiant Ones was a great example of that, where Jimmy Iovine was talking about all the fire he was under when he was doing all the Death Row stuff and people were really coming after the label saying you guys are perpetuating violence and gang culture and all this shit. And he was like, fuck you. I'm defending freedom of speech and I'm not, I'm not intervening. These guys can say whatever they want. Now I'm not saying that wasn't pressure some to him and it probably was an incredibly anxious time for him, but the fact that he could still continue on, he could choose to continue on with it was the takeaway. It, and I don't think you could do that anymore. It's like it's like the second people start the shit up on on Twitter, which is the new version of the picket line, you're done. That's it. You're you're out. I mean, they tried to do it to Chappelle, uh, and they tried to do it to Louis, but they, those guys have so much money and so much clout that mm -hmm. Louis was like, "Fuck it, I'll go to Poland and do shows." I was like, "Well, that's nice if you're Louis, you know." Chappelle's right. doing those fucking. Chabelle's doing those doing American those. History X shows out in Ohio <laughs> on, his, on his farm. <laughs> on, his lawn, on, on his lawn. <laughs> but I mean, if you're not Chappelle or Louie, it's like, what the fuck are you going to do, man? You know, it's, I, I don't know, man. I'd rather just work in a fucking uh, bodega, like you guys said. It's just like, <laughs> a quiet life, you know, yeah. it stresses me out. Well, I, I know for me, uh, like, I understand because I, I'm very left leaning, but I also ne never liked the cancel culture aspect of people pick and choose because I've seen it work in reverse and I've never liked that. I, I remember what happened to the Dixie Chicks in 2003. You mean the Chicks? The Chicks now, <laughs> finally, yeah. The I mean, Lady the Antebellum shit crazier. Well, that's another thing. Yeah, yeah. that one is that, nuts. Them bitches is crazy. They, they changed the name to say they're they not racist it's from Lady Antebellum to Lady A. Ignoring that there's a well, singer already out named Lady A, this black woman, and now they're trying to sue the black women to get the name Lady. It's like, what's the It's not a great PR heard? move. Like, they're the best. Do you like black people or not? Like, what is this? I'd rather you be called Lady Lynch than talk about you're going to sue the bitch that got the name already. You want to call it the Lady Lynch? Lady Lynch. <laughs> what, yeah. And they tried to put it on her. They go. Yeah, like it's, like it's hurtful. Yeah, they go. She's she's trying to extort us for uh, an, un, an unreasonable amount of money. She wants ten million dollars. It's like, guys, she's saying to you, "You want to take my livelihood away? This is what it's worth. This is what to it's me. worth to yeah. me, right?" So change your name to some other shit, and we're done. Uh huh. And now they're suing her. Like, no, fuck you. We have the right to do this. It's it's, it's that's astonishing. Foul. That Ooh, one's real foul, man. But going back to what happened with the Dixie Chicks, that was yeah. when the we had the America had the war fever and everybody was gung ho about going to war in Iraq and didn't give a fuck about the reason. They spoke up and the entire South turned on them like as yeah. a whole. Radio started boycotting radio stations. Their career, even though they had they couldn't get radio play because people were protesting and they listened to those protests. So even mm. though they had a number one record, they couldn't get it played on the radio, and their career pretty much ended after that. And that's a weird well, thing to how, watch. How are they doing now? I mean, I they were never the same after that. I I don't know if they chose to retire at that point, but they never. No, they, 
they still put records out and stuff. I mean, I have no idea how they sell. I imagine they sell well enough that they're still getting press, but I don't know. But it's just weird to watch it. I didn't like it when it happened on the other side, and that's kind of what I don't like about because I get the reasoning behind why cancel culture exists because people are tired of certain shit. But then mm. you do things like go after Jimmy Fallon for something he did 20 years ago. And the same thing with Jimmy Kimmel. It's like, what has their record been since? Can we, you know, especially if it's that much time, but there just seems to be no logic sometimes behind it. It's just this anger and you want people's careers over and you don't know. And there is also no governing body that says how much time you serve, when is enough? There, there's going to be people who, and I didn't like what he did, but there's going to be people who no matter when Louis C.K. performs, if it's 10 years from now, they're still going to think he shouldn't be allowed to perform. And that's a little Ooh. odd to me. That's what bothers me about the way a lot of it gets handled is because it throws, it defeats the, the purpose of uh, progress, it defeats the concept of progress. The concept of progress is supposed to be that you look back on the past and you say, we need to be better than that and you need to progress, which is what a lot of people are trying to do right now. But now yeah. we're doing this thing where people are taking shit from 20, 30 years ago and going, we want to apply today's standard to that. <clears throat> so the, the Jimmy Fallon one's a good example where it's like it immediately went to, he did blackface. And it's like, well, hold on a second. He did a Chris Rock impression. That's, there's, there's, there's a little bit of a difference there, first of all. Mm. I know we're not supposed to do that anymore, but at the time, nobody even batted an eye at this. Now, I'm not saying that that was right. Right. But what the f – nobody's blaming Lauren Michaels. Nobody's blaming NBC. Nobody's – you know what I'm saying? Like, it's easy. Right, 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 right. And then it just becomes about the easiest version of the fight to me. It's like yeah. a lot of nonprofits, the things they choose to go after – are real easy fights. You know, it's real easy for an anti-gay defamation league to go after a Vince Vaughn movie because he makes a joke in the trailer where he goes, smart cars are gay. That's a dumb, easy fight. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's not a yeah. real fight. It's a real easy fight to go after Jimmy Fallon because who gives a fuck about Jimmy Fallon? Nobody's worried about pissing off Jimmy Fallon. However, Lauren Michaels, they don't want to go after because they're worried, oh, well, what if I want to be on SNL one day? What if, uh, or, or, or NBC, but I like the shows on NBC. I don't want to go after, you know what I'm saying? Like, I say, I say to this day, if Harvey Weinstein still made this business money, mm. he, he wouldn't be. Fuck no. Right. Not, not I, to the extent that I, I don't know. I think there reaches a point where the publicity loses you money and they have to cut ties because that's all this shit is really about. Is companies well, yeah, you, you go when you, they, you look all the corporations that are getting behind this, they're getting behind this. Why they're getting behind it because they they're, they're getting ready for the future. They're getting they're thinking that they like this market is going to open up and they're not going to be continued. Look, we've been arguing about the Redskins. People have been arguing about the Redskins as a as a as a name for years, for decades. Right. And now all of a sudden it's the big switch and nobody's really fighting it now. But then they volunteer. Let's change it over. And we're all like, good, you man. But we, we this is not the fight. Um, well, it's the same but, thing with the Kaepernick thing where they released a statement. The NFL releases a statement about it like we were wrong. After how many years of this? Yeah, they and, just, then they didn't, and then they didn't give him a job. Right. They didn't even give him a tryout. So I'm, it, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I was just going to say, what's disheartening to me about the Kaepernick thing is because I, I was very supportive of him and, and what that whole thing that he did, I, I, I thought it was great. It bothers me now, though, that he goes now and signs a deal with Disney. And Disney, to me, is a, a thousand times more toxic than the NFL is. Yeah. Disney is fucking horrific on multiple fucking levels. Yeah. The, the, the first of which, in my opinion, I mean, forget about a history, uh, you know, it, not even, well, shit, the history of complete racial stereotypes. They've sure. done way more awful shit about with that stuff than the NFL does. And then on top workers. of it all, the most recent offense with Disney is their shameless monopolization of the en entertainment industry. I mean, they're buying up every studio. They're importing all the studio's content to their own streaming service, and then they're editing the content. I mean, that is really, really fucking dangerous. And people on the surface go, oh, big deal. They cut this one clip out of this one movie. It's like, no, man, 
you don't understand. Like that is going to get to a point where they're telling you what you're allowed to see and what you're not allowed to see. There's a, there's a legislation on the table right now in Scotland. Now, I don't think it'll pass, but if it did pass, it would make illegal, unintentional, harmful language. And there are enough subsections to it that it pertains to art. So one of the subsections in this legislation actually says that if you direct a play <clears throat> that has something in it that could be harmful to a group of people, even unintentionally, uh, the play could be held liable, the production held liable, the director and the actor who says the words held liable, per any person in possession of the material held liable with punishment of up to seven years in prison. That's fucking what? insane, man. That's an overcorrection of like, that's Nazi shit. You know, when you got Holly, I do that's think almost, it, that's almost like if they took people from another land and enslaved them and brought them here and made them build a whole <laughs> country. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, it's they, fucked up. They, they, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fucked up too. <laughs> yeah, it depends hey, so, on, depends on what you think. <laughs> let's not say things we can't take back, bro. Come on, let's be careful here. We got careers to worry about. <laughs> this, this is this was my argument with with Joe. Anytime the pendulum swings one way, it swings back the other way. It swings and then it swing and it swings back and it forward and then it finds a mid ground. I think that this will find the the cancel culture. But the like I said to Joe, you know when we talk about this stuff, you you the reason why we don't talk about Germany we don't talk about Berlin in the same breath that we talk about Nazi Germany is because they accepted the fact that there was something wrong mm -hmm. they they paid reparations to do that they took down the swastikas they took down the um they took down the the iron crosses and they said that this was wrong they removed everything and then people could move forward right and With they made all it this... illegal to to have those things represented too they right. can't have them by law except for art which they which is kind of cool that they but not what we do here which is we're still fighting over the idea of whether it's all right to have confederate flags for tra traitors i mean it was treason well, well look it, it's it's there there's there's a gray area with that whole argument. I and I I would say this. There the problem I have with Confederate statues is that they went up during the civil rights movement. It was in uh, with the intent on exactly. creating fear and and so on and so forth. Right. Exactly, exactly. So I'll say this. I think <clears throat> I think it's a good thing that Auschwitz is still standing. I think it's something that people need to know was there. I think they need it needs to be visited. And I think it would be an extremely gigantic fuck you to the people that suffered and died there if you were to tear it to the ground and put up a bunch of condos. I think that would be very fucked up. I However, agree. that's not the same thing as erecting a bronze statue of Hitler in the town square of Berlin. You know what I mean? Or leaving up Nazi flags. Those in are two very hall, different. Too. Right. It's not like these. It's it, in front of government buildings. There's right. statues of Robert yeah. E. Lee. Yeah. So, so those are two very different things. And, and and the other thing for me is, I'm Dante and I were talking about this. I'm tired of only hearing white people talk about this shit. They did a news package uh, on uh, CBS News about the Teddy Roosevelt statue in front of the art museum, um, or in front of the Museum of National History. Yeah. They interviewed five white people and one black dude. Five white people, one black dude. The five white people said, take, take it, down. it down. Oh, my God. Blah, blah, blah. The one black dude goes, I don't know, man. I mean, it doesn't bother me. If you want some real change, we got to start looking at our Congress seats. And He actually had a real solution to the fucking problem of what's going on here. Now, I'm not saying that means keep the statue up. Right. I'm just saying, why is that the minority opinion when it comes to that statue? Because the reason why that's the, the solution by minorities is because we know that there's real pain and and the, 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 the liberals who are jumping on the bandwagon, they <clears throat> they want to be validated by saying, oh, I'm against Confederate right. flags and statues. Right. But like I said before, the 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 the, the bird watcher lady in the park, mm -hmm. <clears throat> She, she, if she had not gotten busted, changing code, changing, 
and calling the police frantically. Right. Like, hey, he's coming up. Uh, uh, and then when she didn't get the response the first time, she amped it up again. Even oh, he's coming <laughs> at me. Right. It's because she's aware of the white privilege. She's mm -hmm. aware of the fact that this is this is a uh, this is something. This is a power that she has as a white woman. And if she didn't get caught, she'd be the first chick that's marching in Black Lives Matter. She said that at, when on her apology. I have black friends. I do this. I I I I I you know I. I, uh -huh. I take foster care dogs. I mean, I choke them, but I mean, I take right. them and feed them, you right, know, right. and she would be the first one that's an ally. So right. the thing is what black folks are not really worried about that. Look, like, how many times you see we see the Karens. You if you if you watch the Karens now, the Karens are using the N bomb and they're calling people yeah. black people don't give a fuck that you call me. And like, I don't give a you lose that ass trailer park. Jelly sandwich, black, dirty, barefoot, eating sister fucking motherfucker. I don't give a fuck what you think about me. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you think. You're a fucking clown. Mm -hmm. But you think you're better because everybody's telling you that your whiteness is weapon weaponized and you think you're better. But mm -hmm. no, black folks, when you call black people monkeys and a like you fucking cornball, like we don't give a fuck about that. No, it's right. not. It doesn't have the same. But the, pr the thing is that they still think that it matters. They still think that they're better. You ain't got no teeth in your head and you're fucking your cousin. Like, I don't give a fuck about you. The problem is over and over again, this is a problem, is that there's real systemic racism in place. There's a disparity of, there's a disparity of average income for a white family that don't even have, that the head of household doesn't even have a high school diploma compared to a black family where both partners have college degrees at the rate of one-tenth, mm -hmm. one-tenth of, of, of the average white family. The lack of ability to get mortgages, the accumulation of wealth, the you know, we're talking about the and that the, goes back to the whole thing with redlining. I mean, it's it when you oh say yeah, systemic, it's not even and, hidden. I mean, it's, it it's is a matter a thing. of fact. Mm -hmm. It's it's there's there's what the you call uh, de facto yeah. and de jure. De facto is the cultural is the cultural understanding of racism. I don't like black people because A, B, right. C, D. And then there's the jury, which is the the mandated law law made discrimination built into law. So black people are not, they don't give a fuck about a statute. We, they do, but they don't. They, if you, if you, if you got, if I got a job, it's, here's the thing. If a white dude calls me, a, calls me the M-bomb, he might get punched in the face. But if he's a goofy homeless dude, I'm like, I'm not getting none of that bum juice on me. Right. right because, so I can beat you. Like, I don't give a fuck. Who right. the fuck are you? Right. Like, dog, I can buy and sell you. Are you crazy? The point is that there's no economic equality. There's no residential equality. Even when it comes to health care, I was talking to Keith. He was like, ah, you don't know. That's what he sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, I mean, he was like, they're trying to make black people think that they're not healthy. I go, they're not healthy because they don't have the access to health care. And the right. economics of it, too. If you live in a shit neighborhood or if you if you grew up in a neighborhood deprived of resources, you don't have money to eat healthy. Well, that's you, why it makes me that's why it makes me, that's why it makes me so mad Did I cut you off. No, 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 no. no, no you're good. Oh, OK, that makes me that's why it makes me so mad when I see these news reports where they go, oh, my God, what, why is COVID affecting black communities more than white community? You know why? Because you, do you think you're going to get a bunch of people living in a deprived area? Number one, they're not going to have the access to resources like you already said. Number two, they're That's not going to have, have food, food deserts where you can't even buy exactly. healthy food. Exactly. And you think you're going to get a bunch of dudes who everybody turned their back on them. They're standing outside every day, hanging out outside because, because no what, jobs. The fuck, what the fuck else are we going to do? Fuck it. We, we got left here. You think those dudes are sitting home? watching cnn in a panic the same way uh white middle class people they're not so the fact that they won't even mention it they won't even talk about this shit the problem never gets fixed that's why i get so 
and Dante and I were debating this, but it's why I get so fucking angry with, and I'm not defending conservatives, with white liberals. It makes me so mad because they don't address these problems truthfully. They don't do it. They don't address these problems with real conversation. They address them by overcompensating, by displaying guilt with meaningless fucking gestures. And they cut off. And when they, and this is what I was saying to you earlier, Dante, and I, I never finished the point. When they decide your time with the conch shell is up, they make you pass it. And proof of that right now is if you watch what's happening with uh, J.K. Rowling's, uh, with her comments on trans women, where J.K. Rowling said, I support trans women. But I'm a cis woman, and I think gender is important because that means my cis experience is important, and that's important. They are fucking trashing her. And I said to somebody the other day, I go, do you realize two years ago, J.K. Rowling was the woman you weren't allowed to trash? Mm -hmm. That was who the liberals told us you couldn't trash? The, the experience of the born woman in this country and the rape and the assault and all this? Now you got predominantly white dudes who have transitioned into women telling her to shut the fuck up. And we're going right on sister. Tell her to <laughs> shut the fuck up because the liberal class decided her time with the mic was up. She so got the light and had to pass the mic. Yeah. But you got to look at the conservatives and say, we're not passing the conch shell at all. Oh, ever. Absolutely. Yeah. And, then, and yeah. so, and, and that at least, you know, that's like, I've had, I, I, I was, I was talking to um good friend. I'll tell you later who it was, but I was talking to a good friend of ours, mother. And I kind of found out that she, I think she voted for Trump. Mm -hmm. And uh, and she starts with talking about the Kaepernick thing. And she goes, you know, I just don't like to see people, you know, upset. And the flag means certain things to certain people. And I don't want to upset them. Oh, you, you don't want to upset them. What about Breonna Taylor? You don't want to upset her. How about the dude was eating ice cream on his couch and got shot by this white woman who walked in and thought it was her. How I mean, you don't want to upset him either mm -hmm. or you don't want to talk about you've never confused the ball of ice cream for a handgun. I mean, be honest here. I, I do all the time. Mean, <laughs> but I love I would love your take on this. Because I've, I've been thinking a lot about the Breonna Taylor thing. And that's another thing that I don't think is being discussed properly. Right. And I think it's fucked up. Nobody Also, ever, ever, because everybody just keeps saying arrest the cops, arrest the cops, arrest the cops. If you read what happened, it's like these fucking cops were, were going, were doing a no-knock uh, search entry, right? Which is fucked yeah. up. That's the problem. That's the problem. But the problem is, is some dipshit who nobody's talking about, gave these cops the wrong fucking address. They went into the wrong apartment thinking they were going into a repeat offender's apartment. Somebody pulls a gun on the cops. They start firing. It's a shit show. Arrest the cops means nothing. It's a dumb gesture for some cops that got sent to the wrong fucking house. What nobody's talking about is how the fuck are we going to change the rules of these warrants? Who gave the wrong address? Why was the wrong address given? How does the wrong address get given? Well, let's, that's let's, a complicated the, issue. Yeah, but here's here's the thing: the guy who the guy the the guy who called George Flood Flood Gordon, Floyd. the, the, the Floyd's uh, uh, counterfeit money was an Arab dude. Right. That, what about the dude that called it in? Then right. it ended up not even being counterfeit. That's right. the other thing. Exactly. So, so, but, but here's here's the problem, and this is why, and we we can make this clip, Harry. This is why I say there's no such thing as a good cop, right? Oh boy. <laughs> I'm go. going on record with All this. Right. Here's here's why. If I am a comic, and I if I'm a comic. And my job is to make people laugh, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't make people laugh. Then mm -hmm. I'm a shitty comic, right? Hold on, all the time? No. What I'm saying, if most, most, <laughs> if, if, if I'm a comic who's, look, say I'm Jackie Novak. Right? Oh, uh, come on, I love Jackie. Stop. All right, all right, all right. All right. Don't shit on any friends. Come take on. that out. Take that out. Take that out, Harry. Here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> take that out, Harry. I don't say, love her that just much. Just say Nanette. Just say Nanette. Uh, with, with Nanette. Uh, <laughs> that's the safe one. If you, got, if you have a, even, even better, how about this? If you're a fireman 
you take the job on. If you don't like running into fire, burning buildings, you don't take the job. Because no matter what happens, your job is to run into burning buildings, right? And you know, if you're not willing to do that, you don't take the job, right? If I'm a fucking telephone guy and I don't fix phones, right, then I'm a shitty telephone guy. Right. The parameters of being a police officer say that you're, you take an oath to uphold other people's constitutional rights, right? At right. any given time that you don't do that, that is a, a, a blemish against you being a good cop. If okay. you give a PBA card to, to a family member, you are a bad cop. If you <laughs> take a guy and you give a, you, you, you're speeding when you don't have to speed and you're not chasing somebody down for a crime, you're a bad cop. If you double park in a bus stop, you're a bad cop. If you do any of those things because the parameters of you being a good, good cop is that you follow the law. It's, there's pedophiles are horrible, but Catholic priests who are pedophiles are worse because you well, go on record as being the guy who, who the guy who's supposed to be the moral standard. But wouldn't you say? Well, go ahead. Go. I'm sorry. Because like you're saying, if you don't follow the law, that is what in turn makes you a bad cop. But then sometimes in them bending the law, it's uh, favorable depending on the situation. Like you get a speeding ticket, they go, "All right, I'm laying up for the warning." That's, that's let them let bend in the law a little bit to let you slide. And in that situation, it's a good, it's like a thank you. It's good for you when they do it. But then yeah. when they when they murder you in the street, and put a knee on the back of your neck and then yeah. they have qualified yeah. immunity and they're not held responsible for it. It's bad. So I'd that's rather you give me the ticket. Right. Which is yeah. not a crime. It's a it's a it's a it's a, it's not a felony. It's not even a misdemeanor. It's a citation. I would rather you give me the ticket than to fuck and follow the law than to not follow the law when you have autonomy over my life. So if you're if you're not following the law, you're not a good cop. Even if you see some other cop violating my rights by you not you being complicit in that, it, your 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 oath is to keep to to stand up for my rights my constitutional rights if your if your fellow officer is is violating my rights it's your job in your oath to stand up and say no you can't do that mm -hmm. if you're not doing that you're a shitty cop so you basically i understand that what i'm saying is that the the to, to, people are all human and any yeah. job, there's plenty of secretaries that steal copy paper and paper clips and whatever else. Right. But the point is, the difference is that secretaries don't have autonomy over people's lives. And so the minute you, you, you st and, and it's, it becomes the same. It becomes the same. They're, those cops that didn't nail, kneel on his neck, they could say, well, I just didn't do anything. That's not your oath. Your oath is to keep the you, your oath is to protect people's rights at all costs. But what, so what about but then what about the cop? Did you see the video? Uh, I think Willie D posted it. And he said, this is how law enforcement should go, I think was the caption. But it was a white cop with a black uh uh, dude on the ground he, able yeah, to try to cuff him on the ground to try to cuff him these other dudes walked up with cameras they go what's going on he goes my knees on the cop goes my knees on his back look my, yeah and he i goes, saw that he goes do that. you guys want can you guys help me and then right. they step he said, in no like, he says he says do you want to help me yeah and the guy goes and the black dude gets on the floor and says look move your arm dog stop re stop resisting that nah, nah, i saw it and they cuffed the dude brought it, it right. literally brought a tear to my eye right the so, fact, and then, sure. to me that's a good that's a good cop right there i mean that's I, y you know i wouldn't uh, yeah i i would say that but why are we in that position now why well, that, are why is that the case right now? Kind of, i i hear you dude it's 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 it's, it's almost like saying uh, there's no such thing as a good banker Right. There's some good bankers out there. It's unfortunate 
that the banking industry has snowballed <laughs> in the right. direction it, the, it has. The param- the param- so even it if gets, you're a good, even if you're trying, if even if you're trying to be a good cop, but Dante, the par- are you saying that the system is so messed up that there is? I'm saying no that way the, the parameters of the par- parameters of the system and the doesn't allow. Even if you're a good person <laughs> and your attempt is to be a good cop, the it's system like does. The system Training doesn't that- allow you to be a good cop. Yeah, I'm not saying that there's not good people. There's not if there are good people, but once you put people in that in that position, it, it, look, it, there's cops who want to stand up and go, "Yo, this is wrong. You shouldn't be kneeling on this guy's neck." But if he does it, then it's like, "What are you a sellout?" What is now? The next time he calls for backup. He don't get back up. He's on his own because he's a snitch. If mm. he goes to to internal uh, internal affairs, okay. then he's a snitch. Because and, and so now he's out. It so there's a whole the blue wall of silence that doesn't allow it. And the reason why that is is because there's no oversight. Because the union, the police unions, are, do exactly what they're supposed to do, which is to keep the people on the job bad good or otherwise because that's their job every yeah. time somebody if people people are not going to pay union dues if you're not protecting them to stay on the job well it's like we talked we talked about this before and i use the example of presidents and it's just you know it's like i i hear you i hear you there are good men but the job requires you to to do bad things which then by default puts you into the bad category. It's like, I, know, I believe in my heart that, for example, Obama and Jimmy Carter are decent men. I really do. I know they did foul shit, yep. but I also don't think that they're Trump. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, exactly. Trump, yeah, is, sure. Trump is another level. Nixon's another level. You know what I mean? Well, let me say, Jimmy Carter, I've read a, I read a biography on Jimmy Carter. He was a motherfucker because he was actually a, he was actually a, um, his, he was, you know, a peanut farmer and basically his ancestors were, were slave owners. Hey, mm-hmm. And so his money was made by the, the, the sale. See, so you no. can't even. <laughs> you can't. You're about to tell me Obama was a slave owner. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> if, you do, if you look at the map, the 23 and me, it Jesus. gets nasty, Joe. You don't want to see it. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah. Jimmy Carter was a piece of shit, and they and they they tried to make like he was a country boy, but he wasn't. He was an uh, he was a he was a southern ar- ar- aristocrat. Here's, here's the thing: what he's done since building ha- I mean, he's to this day he's still building houses, habitat Absolutely. for humanity. So it becomes this thing. I it it makes what Joe says very true. There is, and what you say true, there is no good president because if right. you look back at what you have to do to to get that job and to keep that job. Even Obama, who I like, yeah, I mean the drone shit is crazy if you yeah. look at it, and nobody gets out of it clean. And then, but then at some point, then you become like Christopher Hitchens, where he just everybody's bad. You know what I mean? But There's, here's there are no good people. Right, right. I love, I love Christopher Hitchens though. <laughs> I do too. I, I I I love Christopher. Hitchens. I, my favorite shit is when he gives the fucking Bill Maher audience the finger when he said <laughs> that he liked. He said he supported George W. Bush and they booed him and he gave them the finger and he goes, you fucking sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Why did he say he supported George Bush? He did. That's, uh, Hitchens got ostracized at the end of his life by a lot of intellectuals because he started because he was the classic example. Now, I'm not saying I followed him on everything uh, uh, nah. or agreed with him, rather, but he was the classic version of the intellectual liberal who watched his own team get so corrupt and start to eat each other that he went to the other team almost by default. At least that's my interpretation of it. And that's the one thing I never want to do. But as mad as always... I get with the left, I, ne- I just say all the time, I got to move out of L.A. before I become a Trump supporter because the <laughs> left was so fucking irritating out there that you start to go, uh, you just start to naturally gravitate towards the other side. I go, I got to get the fuck out of here, man. I don't want to be on either one of these teams right now. But Hitchens is a guy who always was able to find, you know, as a, as a reporter and a writer, he was always able to find what people did wrong. I mean, he could find a piece of chocolate and tell you why it's evil. Like can't, you know, (laughs) he was against mother Teresa and he was against, 
he was against Clinton Reagan. and Reagan. I mean, he just could find the bad yeah, in anything. He should have been against Reagan. Reagan was a fucking right. bad No bad. doubt, Reagan. but he would tell you that Clinton was just as bad as Reagan. That, that, oh, yeah, know. well, Clint, well, you talk about the super predator and the law and order, but basically Clinton, who they were like is the first black president, that he was, him and Hillary were the ones that started with the super predator. They, see, there was a time when that law and order shit that, that Nixon, the shit that Trump is trying to do now, which is that law and order shit. I'm a law and order president. I'm a law and order president. Meantime, you let fucking Roger Stone go, which is insane. But right. you're, you're, you know, the hypocrisy is there. But but uh, Clinton knew that the only way they could win elections was by a f uh, by they so they seemed liberal on the top but they were talking about law and order and they were talking about the black people being black young black dudes being super predator and having no way that you could save them and they should be locked up and thrown away th and the key well, thrown they away they started the three strikes rule right the they started the three the, the clinton so so but the, here's the problem but, but here's also the that problem. was the only way to get elected at the time that right, was, because no liberal like, would have gotten out. elected at the time. Yeah. So that, so then uh, that that raises the 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 an interesting point to me, which is, and it, this is where a lot of us are hitting walls. And again, I don't even know where I stand on this, but I'll use the KRS. Uh, I watched an interview with KRS One talking about Africa Bambata, and KRS One had said Africa Bambata got accused of molesting kids. Mm -hmm. KRS One. The headline said that he defended him. And I was like, what the fuck is KRS One talking about? So I, I watched the interview and KRS One, and he says in the thing, he goes, I don't, I'm not interested. And the reporter goes, How can you not be interested in, in these accusations? And KRS One said, Because I'm not interested in rumors. Black people have to start treating their heroes and leaders the way white people do, as infallible. We're not talking about a rapper, we're talking about the creator of hip hop. And when you think about what that has meant to our community, I am not going to take this guy down based on rumors. Now, you show me proof, and that's a different story, which is a very interesting argument because yeah. it's the pro-Cosby argument that a lot of uh, black people made in, in Cosby's defense, which was these are allegations, these are rumors, and look at what this man, look at the good this man has done versus the bad. And that's what that's what the, the conservatives are doing with Trump now, because they do in their hearts think he does good. That's what the left does with the Clintons all the fucking time. Uh, that's what people did with Obama for the most part. And it becomes that's what this, humans do. That's what humans do. Yeah. So it becomes this interesting argument because I think everybody thinks. And again, I don't even know where I stand on this, but people think that that the Christ figure exists. It, it, he doesn't. There is no Jesus. There is no, I never did a thing wrong. I always turn the other cheek. I kiss prostitutes on their forehead and say, God bless you. And then I let them crucify me because it was righteous. That doesn't exist. So, you know, go, Jimmy Carter, what's worse? What he did or what he didn't do? You see what I'm saying? Like right. uh, the history of the family, does that outweigh the positive? I don't fucking know, man. I don't fucking know. But that's that's that it's a really, really tough thing right now. I and think that's the thing is we, we people could look past that, especially if we're talking about the black community. They can't ignore the past because it's not the past to the black community. It's still the present. So that's sure. the problem. It would be easier if everything was copacetic and, you know, if you had, listen, if you like, like I say over and over, this is what this is why when people talk about the liberation, how liberal Berlin is, they don't talk about Berlin and the liberal, the liberal aspect of Berlin in the context of Nazi Germany. It's become a separate thing because there was an old, there was an apology, there was reparations and there was a, there was a there move was to move forward. But the, we still, we're still arguing about Confederate flags. They just outlawed the Confederate flag and what did white folks do? They got their bought Confederate flags and then they circled the, the NASCAR, the, the track, for hours in protests. So it's like even when it's wrong, they still won't they won't they won't do the right thing. Just all, and all they had to do was just shut up and say I don't like it. Dude, you got this lady that took they they painted Black Lives Matter in the street. You got that couple that go and they they go out and they painted bitch, it black. This bitch, is, this bitch is never 
painted in her life, I bet. They but she went out and pressed be- against them too. They did, yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. They but they but they actually went out and got rollers. And this bitch, ain't, you know, she don't paint no other time in her life, but she took the time to paint that. Inspired. So it's like inspired right. to, to 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 go. So this is the problem. It's it's inspired. evil. It was evil at a point because all she really had to do was leave it alone. She could not agree. You know, you we're talking about you got all these white dudes that are pulling Black Lives Matter um, posters down and they're getting, you know, motherfuckers, the, the bike dude and another dude and another Karen dude. And they're ripping it down. But you don't. But nobody you wouldn't let nobody pull your your Confederate flag down. So now all of a sudden you're, you're putting ropes around the Confederate statues and you're yanking them down. And now it's these savages like this is the point. We, we talk about the le- the left and the liberals and this stuff. But but no. But, you, you know, people, it's like I've heard I was talking to somebody who I think I think I'm somebody's mom. And she was basically I think she voted for Trump. And she was telling me how she didn't think that Kaepernick was. She doesn't want to be. A, and, and I'm like, wait a minute. I keep talking. I go, do you understand that he took a knee because he spoke to somebody? I go, I go, at the very least, you ask him what what is the protest about? And he told you it was about unarmed black men being killed and police brutality. You have to give him the benefit of the doubt. You don't get to take you don't get to tell me what the value of it was and then get offended because because you don't because your arbitrary value that you put on it is what you ultimately go. It's the way you're going. Hey, this thing is going to be this is what he must have meant by it. You don't get to do that. It's not fair. And it's but they do that with black folks all the time. It's you want me to denounce you want me you want it they they wanted Obama to uh, de- denounce Reverend Wright. But they nobody and, and Louis Farrakhan, he's gotta denounce him. But who Trump can fuck a hooker and it's fine. Billy like Graham's that, Trump son didn't, didn't have to denounce David Duke. He didn't David have Duke. to denounce the support of the Ku Klux Klan. He, I mean it's so what we're talking about is thing. so what we're literally talking about is when we talk about equality, you have to start from the beginning. What is the equality? You can't start it now and go, oh, these liberals are going. This is what I was saying to Joe. You can't go, oh, these liberals are taking it too far. We still are still looking at one tenth. If you look, if you want to say you want to call me a nigger, give me ten times my salary. If 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 black family is 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 one tenth of is one tenth of the the average family. Give me ten times my salary. You, you know, call me whatever the your fuck PayPal you want. Out there, we might get it from the Proud Boys. I mean, <laughs> we might raise some money. <laughs> and, well, they're gonna, I, and they're gonna all call me whatever the fuck they want. Give me ten times what my salary is now, and don't Google my net worth, you Murph, you motherfuckers. But the, 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 but that's the point. The point is, let's start on equal ground, and then we can move forward from that. If we can't start on equal ground, then stop. You stop talking about how bad it is. It, yeah, even yeah, the thing with the hair. Oh yeah, I, I, I listen. I told. Look, the, the my wife law? is from. My wife is from. My wife is from England, and she was like, you know, why don't black people protest? I'm like, you, don't, you don't even know. Slow the fuck down. I go. I don't even really get along with my sisters, but it was revolutionary for my sisters to wear natural hair in corporate America. Crazy. Just just for her to wear her hair as it exists. Mm-hmm. That was revolutionary. Mm-hmm. So so what are we talking about? We're talking about that uh, that a uh, uh, a dude gets canceled because because he cuz he 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 said you know, he said something racist. I don't really give a fuck. I, I can't. I can't care about that. I can't care about that um, because even if, even if they come at me, it still ain't gonna be even. It's we're we're talking about four centuries of bullshit, and we're doesn't still it, arguing. Doesn't it bother you though that it's not the cancellation thing has? Tr- it's 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 gone past race it's gone past race they tried to do it to Chappelle. it and never goes pa- it never goes past race that's and, the point and that it, it, but, it race is always present sure and then they add more onto it but my so, but, right but my point is this my point is this the same people 
again, it's a, it's a faction of liberal people that bother me. The same people that said, we need to respect the black experience. We need to listen to the black experience. We need to sit down and shut up and listen. The second Chappelle said a thing they didn't like, they went after Chappelle. That bothers me. That bothers me. It bothers me. me too. It bothers me too. But you know what bothers me? Watching a guy with nine, 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 uh, nine minutes with a dude on his neck, and then people, and then, and then you can't even arrest the dudes when you're not even arrested. I mean, it's just even the most obvious. You know what I'm saying? There's still so, people supporting that too. Even, yeah. I mean, there's still people protesting by protesting the protest by putting their knee on a guy's neck for fun. Yeah. Somebody said yeah, I breathe. saw a sign, some dude wrote a sign, white dude wrote a sign that says George George uh George Floyd uh drug free for two weeks. It's like this is the type of shit we're going on. Harry, you gotta close this out, man, because my Uber my Uber eats is here. Okay, let's wrap right, it up. Give I my credit. Yo, uh, Joe, man, I love you, bro. Thank love you. Love you too. Thanks for having me, guys. I had a great uh, time. Y'all want us to talk because I don't want you to get out. Get out of. Oh, oh, yeah. We'll talk about it. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, can I plug my podcast? Yeah, Joe, plug, plug, plug everything. Plug everything, man. Uh, Without a Country, me and Corinne Fisher discussing the news with a gray area take. <laughs> Uh, well, you've we always call- been a guy who's been, you know, even whether you lean left or right, it's it's right down the middle. That's what I've always respected about you. It's common sense stuff. And I've always liked that about you, Joe. Thanks, buddy. You too, man. Yeah. Uh, but we're at uh, uh, every week, every Tuesday, live stream from Gas Digital. Use promo code WAC for free 30 days. And it hits every other podcast outlet on Saturdays. And then we have a YouTube channel you can subscribe to. Check that out. That's it. I think if you like this kind of discussion, you'll like that show. So, no, no uh, doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, Andre, Thanks for having me, play? guys. Uh, Andre D. Thompson, uh, between spots. And um, that's all, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, for Dante Nero stuff, you can follow him on social media. I think everything is at the Dante Nero. Uh, but if you love the show, please check out the uh, YouTube channel. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We post complete episodes, clips, and some classic episodes up there. And that's where a lot of the stuff is going to be happening from now on. So go like, subscribe. It helps us out. And uh, as always, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. Thank you, guys. Later, guys. Good seeing you guys. See you, man. Bye, yo.